Dear students, in this module, we'll be continuing with our ongoing chapter of biology, chapter 7, Control and Coordination. In this module, we'll be basically discussing about the human nervous system. The human nervous system basically comprises of the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system comprises, that is CNS, comprises of brain and spinal cord. Whereas the, pori, the peripheral nervous system includes the autonomic nervous system and voluntary nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system includes the autonomic nervous system as well as the voluntary nervous system. Autonomic here refers to the one which is involuntary, which is not under our control. So this is referred to as CNS, that is the central nervous system, PNS, that's the peripheral nervous system, and ANS, that is autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system comprises of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Talking about first, that is the central nervous system. The central nervous system, that's the main division, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. The brain, that is the encephalon, and spinal cord, that is the myelon. Brain is situated in head, and the myelon is located in the neck and trunk. Moving on to the brain, that is the encephalon. The brain is the widest and uppermost part of CNS. It is the highest coordinating center in the human body. Talking about the brain, firstly, we'll discuss about the location. The location is the head region. Brain is situated in the cranial cavity of the skull. The bones of the cranium or the brain box protect the delicate organ from mechanical injury. They also provide shock absorption capacity. Now the study of brain in all aspects is referred to as encephalogy. Membranous protection in the form of three membranes, that is, the meninges, which help in shock absorption, is given to the brain, which is an important part. The meninges, which are present, they are basically the dura matter, arachnoid matter, and pi matter. The cerebrospinal fluid, that is CSF, which is a colorless, Clear alkaline fluid is present in the ventricles of the brain, central canal, spinal cord, and it is present in the space between the meninges. It protects the CNS from shock and it keeps it moist. Moving on to the component parts, before that, let us... See the diagrammatic pictorial view of the meninges. So this is, these are the three meninges, the three layers, the three protective membrane. Between them is the CSF, which is referred to as the cerebrospinal fluid. And this is the cranium or the brain, which comprises of gyri and sulci. It is divided into two hemisphere by a fissure. Moving on to further, the parts of the brain. The brain basically includes the forebrain, midbrain, and the hindbrain. The forebrain, it makes up the largest part of the brain. The forebrain basically comprises of the cerebrum, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus, and the olfactory lobes. So basically, the component parts of the forebrain are cerebrum. That's the largest part of the brain. Then it is the olfactory lobes and later to it is the thalamus or the hypothalamus. 
discussing about the forebrain firstly we'll talk about the olfactory lobes there is a bulb like structure which is situated in the lower part of anterior brain which is referred to as the olfactory lobes the basic function of the olfactory lobe is that it controls the sensation of smell talking about the other part of the brain that is the forebrain that is the cerebrum so cerebrum that's the largest part of the brain the longitudinal fissure of the cerebrum partitions the cerebrum into two hemispheres one is the right and the other one is the left hemisphere basically there are four lobes which are found in the cerebrum that's the frontal parietal temporal and occipital lobe moving on to the lobes of the cerebrum that is the frontal lobe which is associated with reasoning parts of speech movement emotion and problem solving the parietal lobe which is associated with recognition perception of stimuli occipital that is associated with visual processing the temporal lobe is for auditory reception or for hearing moving on to the thalamus that's a portion which is present between the cortex and the midbrain the location is depicted over here it function includes the relaying sensation and special sense signals it gives to the cerebral cortex it also relays signal from the cerebral cortex it regulates sleep alertness and consciousness talking about the hypothalamus the hypothalamus is a portion of brain that contains number of small nuclei it releases the releasing hormone which activates the master gland that is the pituitary gland which in turn releases stimulating hormone to activate the other endocrine glands talking about the midbrain it consists of crura cerebri and corpora quadrigemnia it is a small region the superior colliculi have centers for sight and the inferior colliculi have centers for auditory reflexes midbrain function is to control reflex movements talking about the hind brain the hind brain is basically made up of three parts which is the cerebellum so it can be seen in the diagrammatic representation over here there is cerebellum the pons and medulla oblongata cerebellum it's the second largest part of the brain cerebellum maintains posture equilibrium and muscle tone the function of pons veroli is to control the some aspects of respiration medulla oblongata is a rod like structure which continues into spinal cord the function of medulla oblongata are to regulate the rate of heart beat breathing movements to regulate blood pressure swallowing coughing sneezing and vomiting moving on to the cerebellum so that's the second largest part of the brain it consists of near about 12.5 it comprises 12.5% of the total brain it controls muscular coordination and maintains equilibrium talking about cerebellum it is basically used to maintain the body equilibrium and balancing medulla oblongata as depicted over here contains the cardiac respiratory vomiting vasomotor centers it controls functions such as breathing heart rate and blood pressure pons veroli is a structure that's located on the brain stem the pons relay sensory information and it aids in relaying other messages in the brain 
controls arousal and regulates respiration that's the main function spinal cord is a structure which is near about 45 centimeter long it continues from medulla oblongata and extends up to the lumbar region as can be seen in the diagrammatic representation over here this is the sectional view of the spinal cord it has a central canal that is filled with csf 31 pairs of spinal nerves they emerge from spinal cord and they are mixed up because they conduct both sensory and motor impulses 31 pairs of spinal nerves they arise from spinal cord spinal cord acts as the center for reflex action in this module we carried out a detailed discussion on the central nervous system comprising of the brain and spinal cord hopefully you must have garnered all the concepts thoroughly thank you